Hi guys and welcome to the Civil War in 28mm. Uh, this is a battle that we fought recently on an 18 foot by 6 foot table. This is the standard table that we're going to be using now this size uh, in the upcoming battles that we've got coming up. We've got quite a few planned. Uh, we're going to be doing the 7 days battles, um, each one of them. And uh, they're going to be as close as, they, as we can to, to the actual battles. Um, so watch out for those. This is the Battle of Cranky's Farm, July 1862, and don't go looking the battle up because it doesn't really exist. It's a concept battle. Um, the idea was to uh, get the rules pinned down and um, the ideas that we had for the game pinned down. For a long time I've been working on a system uh, with Andy of um, actually developing a set of rules that would allow us to have what really happened a lot in the American Civil War. Quite often brigades would turn up and be faced by a division. Quite often a brigade would turn up completely out of position behind another one. Um, for instance, Longstreet at Seven Pines, you know, he actually turned up completely in the wrong position, delayed somebody else marching, and then went into the battle in the wrong position, then blamed the other general afterwards, you know, rather famously. So a lot of that happened because in 62 in particular, there was there wasn't very there wasn't very good uh, command control. There wasn't many good sort of um, staff structures within the high command. So when Lee took over the army when Johnson was wounded, um, what what you found is that you know Lee would give his orders and then the men would rush off to do them, and basically no one would actually go and check that they were doing them. There was no kind of you know operations officer like there is in today's armies. So because of that, you'd often get brigades, you know, going down the wrong road, arriving out of a wood, you know, behind their own friends or on the flank of the enemy. So that's the idea of this. We called it a very civil war. It's a, a supplement for the rules we're using, which are a pickets charge. And again, the pickets charge rules are fantastic rules. However, they've been, they, you know, they've got a really hard press. A lot of people have, have put a down on them because they're not the best written rules in the world. So when you first get them, they can be a little bit daunting and you've really got to go through them and iron out some of the, the, the way the rules are kind of written. They can be a little bit confusing. But when you do get to grips with them, they are a good set of American Civil War rules to give a really good flavor for the game. But again, on top of that, we've added our own adaptations. We've got our own firing tables. We've got our own morale tables and many other small house rules that we put into the game to make it very American Civil War-ish. Um, as you can see here, the game starts off with very few forces on the table. This is the, uh, the scouting phase. So, you know, you, you might get some skirmishers, you might get some cavalry, you see some Union cavalry have arrived there. Um, the, the table's largely empty. Um, some Confederate cavalry have arrived on this flank. Um, this is the early days. There's Badan sharpshooters, they've turned up. Um, you know, so some of the units are not historically correct for the period, but look, we've all got war hands figures we need to use, right? So look, there's some Confederate cavalry turned up there. There's Fitzhugh Lee, for instance. Later, on the Sunday, you can see we've got brigades that have turned up the cavalry dismounted there trying to fight them but the idea of the game is that it unfolds without the commander really knowing what's happening so he has to adapt you see there there's a massive gap in the confederate line uh, and the union cavalry's flanked him already because they've come on in a bad position for him so you know does he hold does he attack will a brigade or division turn up and help him out that's the idea of the game and you see it unfold over the um, several weeks that we played it uh, as we go forward all right so hopefully you can join us for the journey and see what you think of the way the battle unfolds so Cranky's Farm 1862 July um, as you can see this is the concept map that I drew so it's quite straightforward uh, you have Cranky's Farm there and the buildings above it and Cranky's Cornfield the Nielsen Farm the Nielsen Cornfield the Wendell's Farm and the Wendell's Cornfield and then you've got the pen I really hope people would fight over the pen because it was a bit of a defendable position for both sides to try and capture um, and then in the center of the map we have the bridge uh, which is in the middle of all the farms crossing the river and then you have the west ford um, which can be crossed by one unit at a time and the east ford which you can also cross one unit at a time then there is a hill to the west which is quite over commanding and there's a hill to the east uh, there is a road coming on uh, from the south, a road coming on from the north, and a road coming on from the northwest. Uh, so that was the concept. That's the battle uh, that Cranky's Farm was going to be about. Each of those areas were worth points. Um, I, I knew what the points were. The players didn't. 
um, but obviously it was also going to be decided on the general overall feel of who had won the battle at the end. Again, would be down to me as I was the adjudicator. Um, I didn't let on what the points were worth, but for instance, the pen was worth a big three points. Each of the hills was only worth one point each because they weren't that strategically important. Um, you had uh, Cranky's farm. Uh, each of the farms was worth two points. The bridge was worth two points. Each of the fords was worth two points. And the big cornfields uh, at the back were worth a point each as well. So well, I was going to use those as a rough guide to see who had actually won. Um, but let's see how the battle unfolded in the skirmish phase. Okay, guys, so during the skirmish phase of the game, um, troops can come on in in one of five regular places on their own baseline and also one of two uh, contested points, which was each of the hills, okay? So you can see the red line that I'm drawing here. This is the Confederate deployment zone or possible Confederate deployment zone at the beginning. In other words, we don't know where their forces are. And then likewise, the Union forces are exactly mirroring that. They're actually coming along the, the, um, the southern edge. Um, and again, they have five points of entry along the bottom. There's two contested points, making 12 points in total. So we use a die 12 to see where stuff initially comes on during the skirmish phase. So here's the points here. You can see five Confederate, five Union, and then two contested. Now, if a Union unit comes on, on a contested point, and then rushes to another point, and is unopposed, it can actually capture that point and make it a union point that they can come on at. Um, this would actually deny the Confederates the right to come on at any of those points. Now, they'd have to be unopposed, um, but if they got there and there was nothing there, they would capture that point. That would be the army flanking, the rest of the army flanking this battle, okay? So therefore, union forces could now come on down that flank. So if the Union arrived there, um, the only thing that would stop this is there was a Confederate unit that was there and it would have to be driven off for the Union to capture that corner. So there you go. So that's how the concept um, of stuff arriving uh, works. So let's get into the battle and see what happened during the skirmish phase. So guys, an initial skirmish uh, deployment. The Union were very lucky. They rolled a, uh, a Union cavalry brigade, a large brigade that came on on the uh, West Hill and also uh, just on the um, uh, just before Nielsen's farm. So they managed to rush on straight away, taking Nielsen's farm, advancing to the road and also securing the West Hill and denying that to the Confederates for the rest of the game. Um, as you can see, the cavalry brigade came on there. Some units have already deployed at the um, West Ford. Um, so they're just rushing through there to capture as much ground as they can and see where the Confederates are. The West Ford has been secured by the Union using Badan sharpshooters and dismounted cavalry. In the town, a small unit of Confederate cavalry rushed forward and dismounted, holding the far side of the bridge. And a small unit of sharpshooters is managing to hold the East Ford. Um, on the other flank, the Confederates have been quite lucky. They've rolled for a, a cavalry brigade and managed to get an elite cavalry brigade. Um, we have we roll for different quality and class and stuff. And an elite, uh, a weak elite Confederate cavalry brigade came on on the East Hill um, and have rushed to take the pen straight away. So that's fallen straight into Confederate hands. Only dismounted cavalry at this stage. But that's all that came on the first phases. Um, but the reason this was an elite brigade is because it was led by Fitzhugh Lee himself. So that was the initial uh, couple of goes. Um, and yeah, the, and nobody really knew what was going to happen at this stage. But as you can see, the Union had a slightly better start, um, capturing a lot of ground. And the, bar the, uh, the table is still quite barren at this stage. So let's meet the commanders. Confederates, you ready? Yes. Whoa. Union, you ready? Oh yes, so you are so used to playing Union that you all just ignored it and the Union went yes sir. So let's get with it, alright? So Confederates, you ready? Oh, it's out us! And the Union, you ready? We're gonna whip this this time real good. That was wonderful. Oh we the great so guys, in the uh, skirmish phase and the early phases of the battle phase, which we haven't quite reached yet, 
as I've explained, we get units come on, so it's mainly cavalry, mainly skirmishers. We're just finishing the skirmish phase, and as you can see, the Union have managed with their brigade of cavalry to rush forward up the western flank and trap off that corner. So the corner now on the uh, Confederates' um, right flank has now been captured by the Union and cannot now be used by the Confederates to bring troops on. So if they roll that corner now, it's a null roll and they get no units coming on there. So that was done by um, Major Flank Frank, who's managed to capture that corner. You can see Dean, they're pointing to his units in the middle, the Confederates, they've had a brigade come on in the centre, and they've rushed forward to uh, come to the um, to that side of the town, and they're just deploying in the cornfield as well. Uh, they're having difficulty because of the corn uh, to deploy, so uh, Gary decides to step in and uh, remove some of the corn which causes a con controversy with uh, his oppo, Frank. Um, but basically, uh, what's happened there is the Confederates are trying to secure uh, that area with a brigade. Um, unbeknownst to them, if you look uh, into the, the central, just below the town, uh, where the Wendell farm is, uh, you can see a Union brigade has deployed. It's been seen by the Confederates. And, but what the Confederates don't know is these grave markers here, that's the, that one there is actually another Union Brigade and there's also one on the right hand side of the centre brigade as well. Uh, the Union actually didn't just get a brigade like the Confederates, they got an entire division come on. So what, at this stage of the game the Confederates do not know that they are facing an entire Union division with their one brigade and they've also lost their left flank already. So it's straight away, first day of the battle, it's looking bad for the Confederates. So where that brigade, that Union brigade is being moved now, to the right of that is another brigade that's hidden and obviously to the left where this gravestone is, is another brigade that's hidden. Uh, on the extreme right flank, uh, you can see the Union have a brigade that's come on in the corner. And at exactly the same time, the Confederates also had an infantry brigade that's come on on the um, eastern hill there, right in the centre. Um, where the box has just been placed, you can see there's a Confederate brigade, a weak, very weak Confederate brigade. It's got somebody who's got two bases and stuff that's been obviously been battered in the back before. Um, that's come on and it's making its way towards the Ford. But again, what the Confederates don't know is where this grave marker is here is an entire Union brigade of about six regiments. Um, it's hidden at the moment because the Confederates can't see it, but they're about to uncover it. Um, so the pen is being held by uh, Fitzhugh Lee's cavalry. And that's where we are um, at the moment after the first initial day of playing. Uh, and yeah, so it's working out well. With its one ABC, and if you use him for morale, the brigades under him receive a minus one on morale when they fire. So, you have a brigadier to use for morale, so yes, you like, don't use your division. Anymore. He's got one to allocate, so he can allocate one ABC. So, if you allocate it to this brigade, you get a re roll if you fail the new orders. Now, you can fail the new orders from one or two, you can get it to. So, roll with dice six. Yeah, 
And then now you've got a D3 with this one. So four, five, or six, it becomes one casualty, or it's not. Yes! Yeah. A union man, four, 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 Plus, you get. Uh, I don't handle rejection very well, so don't pick me up on things like that. Well, you are a trained man. That one's alright. So, that one can do what he likes. The rest can't go down. Yeah, that's alright. Yeah, position heal thyself. You're a trained man. Yeah, position heal thyself. So, the night draws to a close on the first day of the battle. Uh, you can see Gary laughing and spinning in his chair. The only figure on the entire battlefield he controls is this single scout in the middle of this cornfield. And it's facing the entire Union Division and a Union Cavalry Brigade. And you can see him looking nonchalantly at the Union Division. So, after the first day, as soon as the sun goes down, the positions were the Union have swept up their left flank and captured the area right up to the cornfield. Uh, they've also swept through Nielsen's farm across the road and have deployed a skirmish line across to uh, the West Ford. They have a Union division that has come on right in the centre of the map, comprising of three brigades from Nielsen's cornfield right the way across to Wendell's cornfield. They also have an independent brigade that has come on in the far corner that is deployed at the bottom of the hill. Um, the Confederates have a single brigade that has come on and deployed uh, at Cranky's farm. Uh, they had a single small unit of cavalry skirmishers in the building there, some skirmishers at the East Ford and a brigade behind the East Ford. They also control the pen with cavalry, a cavalry brigade, and they did have one full brigade come on the hill which is opposing the, uh, the Union unit in the corner there. So that is the uh, break of play at the end of the first day and the end of this video, part one. Join us in part two for the second day. See what dawn brings. Uh, the battle changes completely and it becomes a very busy field indeed. So I'll see you in part two. Remember guys, like and subscribe. It really helps with the video's ratings. See you soon.